under the shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking, to love came calling, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, six feet under, I thought it was over, and led to the prayer, the voice of a savior, rise up. Welcome to our online service today. My name is Leah and I work at the church here. And uh, if this is your first time with us, we want to say welcome. We hope you enjoy the service. Uh, we hope you would share uh, our link online with other friends as well. So, and we also wanted to say a big happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. We really hope that you get spoiled really royally by your family today. I'm sure you deserve it. Also, there's something coming up on May the 30th that you want to know about. So if you're wondering about next steps and what we're doing here as a church community, as well as what we're doing here in the Paris community, you want to come in person at 7 o'clock on May 30th. Okay, so 7 o'clock, just come here to the church and uh, meet new people. You can ask questions, just hear about what, what is happening. And if you're unable to come in person, what you can do is you can let us know that you want to link in online at 8.30 p.m. So 7 o'clock in person, 8.30 on the 30th uh, online. So please let uh, Joel at parisprez.ca know if you're going to come either in person or online so we know how many are coming. That'd be wonderful. And it's a great place to meet new people, too, if you are new to our church. So, ha. Huh. Now we're going to continue on with our service. Uh, we're going to worship with Wanda, and today we have a wonderful treat for you. Joel is going to interview this wonderful lady by the name of Katrina, who has journeyed with God and has a wonderful testimony to let us know about. So, Lord, we just want to pray for today. We ask that you would speak to us. We ask that you would continue to teach us through your word, through how even Katrina has engaged with you in her own life story. I thank you, Lord, that you are with each and every one of us. <clears throat> and we pray for peace, just for those that need, need peace today. And we just give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the service, everyone. Bye for now. The gospel of Jesus, it's the hope of the ages. Burning brighter and brighter And standing forever The church he is building Nothing can stop it It's a city that's shining A light in the darkness Nothing can stop it
So welcome. Uh, glad you are joining us uh, again uh, this week. Uh, if you've not been with us, uh, we've been working through a series called Encounters with God in Unexpected Places. And it's a series around how Jesus meets people where they're at, but he doesn't leave them there. And oftentimes when you read uh, stories in the Bible, you, you see these incredible encounters of transformation. Well, this week, we're going to continue in the series, but we're going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to share uh, an encounter with someone in our church who has uh, experienced Jesus uh, in a transformational way and the impact it has had upon um, her life. And so uh, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to have a conversation, and you're going to get to uh, listen in uh, with my conversation with uh, Katrina. So welcome, Katrina. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, thank you for, uh, for doing this. Um, I've known you and your husband, Chris, for about 10 years. I remember um, your wedding, and you've got two just uh, lovely, uh, amazing uh, uh, boys. But I want to jump back a couple of weeks, and I appreciate you sharing your story here today. Because I was sitting in the church, actually at a concert, and I got a text uh, from you. And I was going to read everyone the text because that's going to be kind of uh, the jumping in point for our conversation about just this incredible encounter that God has had uh, in your life. And so this, this was the text. It said, I wanted to share with you that the Holy Spirit came into me last week. I've been going through a lot of searching the month prior. It almost feels supernatural to an extent. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Now life really begins. And so when I got that text, uh, like my heart leapt because I know your story. I've been a part of your story. And to see the impact that God is making in your life is uh, amazing. And so uh, we're going to have a chance to share this a little bit here today. And so let's just jump uh, right in. Uh, you mentioned your life as a journey. This has been part of a journey, but it didn't begin at uh, the text. And so take us back uh, a number of years to yeah. where you were at in high school as a teenager, just some of the some of the realities you were facing in life. Yeah, so I think it's important to go back that far because, you know, we all have a beginning where we start our journey and that was mine. You know, it was around 14 years old and I had really struggled with, you know, anxiety and depression going through right through my 20s, my teen years through my 20s, 20 years I was really dealing with um, depression and it spiraled out of control and I ended up developing an eating disorder and I was um, put in an eating disorder rehab um, institution with a bunch of other women and you know I was on antidepressants for a good 20 years you know and dealing with the therapists and the counselors they're all trying to come down to the why like why are you feeling lonely and empty and um, incomplete and why do you feel like you've lost your way and that was a long journey to even get to starting to realize what I needed but that was my start that was my starting point and we all have a starting point and so you you, you talked a little bit with me about how you know you you went to church uh, you believed in God and I love how you said this to me but but you kind of left him at the door, which I think a lot of people can relate to. So let's let's fast forward um, a bunch of years. Um, you got married, uh, you had kids, and you were still attending ch church mm -hmm. kind of here and there. So jump to that part. Okay, so um, I had been like a self, uh, well, self-professed, I guess, control freak. You know, I, I had everything planned, and if something happened outside of what I had planned for that day, I felt completely out of control. I had, you know, the the pregnancy, the delivery, Caden's life, basically, 
planned up until he was married. I, I swear that's how much I had needed control over my life. And when everything fell apart, you know, Caden had severe colic. He was crying day and night for months and months on end. And it didn't end until he was about four because we didn't realize he was intolerant to everything he was eating. And then there was me now spiraling into severe postpartum depression. And when I have to think back at that, you know, it was worse than anything that I had experienced the 20 years prior. You know, we were now in a whole new level of depression um, to a point where I just wanted to pick up and leave. And anybody who has had postpartum depression um, will realize what I mean when I say that. And it's just, it's something very different from regular depression. And I came to you and I said, I don't know. I don't know where to go with this, you know. I mean, I had counselors and therapists helping me previously, but not through something that is quite as severe as what I'm dealing with right now. And you had said, you need to pray, you know, so ultimately that's what I did. You know, I reached out and I started praying and, you know, I consider them my immature prayers at that point because I just said to him, make him stop crying, please. Amen. Mm. You know, that's basically where I was at. Just, just stop it. And it didn't, it didn't stop. You know, it kept going. He kept crying for years. And so my prayers had to change at that point. You know, I kept praying and I kept saying, you know, now get me through the next few hours, get me through the next few days and just help me keep moving forward. And, um, we got to a point where we had to start talking about whether we were going to have another child because well, I was in my mid thirties, we're getting old. We've got to, we got to make a decision what we're going to do. And I had originally said, no way, Jose, we're not doing that again. I'm not going to allow myself to get as low as I had gotten before. And, you know, as women, I think we forget after a lot of years hmm. what we went through. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do it again. And I sat down with my mom specifically and I said, do you think the Lord would put me through something quite as intense as that, quite as bad as that? You know, that was as low as I think I could possibly get. And she said, no, honey, you know, I remember this. She said, no, the next one, the next one's going to sleep through the night. And the next one is going to have Chris's temperament. And it's going to be so easy. You're going to want 10 more after that. I mean, this wasn't just her. This was everybody saying this to me. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It can't, it could never be as bad as it was with the situation surrounding Caden. So we jumped in with both feet and, you know, got pregnant again. And so, well, five years later, Jonah. Yeah. Yeah. Five years the later, was, so... there, was, there was Jonah. And, you know, the situation surrounding Jonah, you know, I, after I got pregnant, um, you know, everything was going great during that pregnancy. And, you know, we were supposed to be having a girl. Her name was going to be Grace. We had gotten rid of all the boys' clothes. We had girls' clothes galore. And, you know, the anatomy scan was wonderful. Everything looked good. And then we got to the, the th one of the third trimester ultrasounds where they said, you know, something's seriously wrong. Like your baby's kidney is atrophied. It's gone. You, there's only one kidney left and you know, your baby's bladder is, is in some images missing in some images deformed, you know, intestinal tract deformities, gross in the abdominal cavity. Something is seriously wrong with your child. And, um, that's when I came back to you, Joel. And I said, now what? I thought that was as low as we were going to get. And now we're on a whole new level. And what am I going to do? <laughs> right? And um, you you came to me and you said, pray. You got to keep praying. But not only that, you know, the prayer team is going to be heavily involved in praying for your child. I remember that conversation with you. I remember being in my basement and you sharing what was happening. And um, I still to this day cannot imagine um, the stress on you, the stress on Chris. Um, and you, you talked about even some of the advice that was being uh, given to you um, with, with, in terms of what you should be doing. And you talk about then you had an encounter um, in your home at the fireplace. Right. So first, yeah, we, we, had, we had to go in for an appointment. And we had to go in for an appointment with the fetal medicine specialist and the genetics team. And we had to figure out what the final conclusion was going to be. Um, and they had said, you know, your child has a very rare genetic disorder. And um, we believe that it is so severe that if the child survives, 
then you will be having to leave your old life behind. You're going to be walking a medical life. You're going to be living in hospital. And, you know, on top of that, at that point, they said, we did some genetic blood work on you, and we know the baby's a boy. So I was trying to wrap my head around the fact that we weren't having a girl. And then they throw this at me, and then it continues. And she says, you know, we think it might be in your best interest to go to the United States and um, to have a third trimester abortion. We can set that up because it's not legal in Canada. And you can have it done, come back, and be on your way, um, living the life that you used to live. And, you know, after the prayer team began praying for me, something had changed. Hmm. And I started feeling like everything was going to be okay. It was about three days after that I woke up and I said, something is different. You know, the Lord's taking care of this. And that carried through to that, that appointment in that room at that moment. And, you know, that didn't mean that God was saying to me that the baby was going to survive or mm. that the baby was going to be healthy. That's not, that's not what I was getting. What I was getting from him was that I'm going to carry you through this. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. You're going to make it through this with me. And, you know, when she came back in to get our answer, whether we were going to go through it or not, my husband and I had immediately decided that there was no way we were letting go of him. And, um, you know, we went home and, it was in the middle of the night, a couple of days later, I woke up and you were talking about, you know, how I'd mentioned to you about an encounter. And I had said, um, I said to you that I couldn't sleep. Um, I was sitting in the dark by myself crying and I was crying as the hardest I had ever cried in my entire life. I remember specifically my heart hurt so bad. I felt like I was suffocating and being crushed. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, I'm grieving right now. I mean, regardless of the fact that I'm following you, I'm grieving. I'm grieving the loss of what I thought my life would look like, my my son's childhood would look like. And I'm grieving the loss of every piece of control that I ever thought I had over my life because I don't have any. And, you know, I know you want me to hold your hand and walk blindly into fire with you. And I'm more than willing to do that. I want to do that. I want to follow you, but I cannot do it with this grief hanging over me. The burden is too heavy. So I handed it over to him and I said, take it, take it so that I can keep walking this path. And I woke up, I kid you not, I woke up the next day and it was gone. And I did not carry that burden with me throughout the rest of that pregnancy. Wow. That's I think it's so important for people to hear is the fact that, you know, God doesn't always remove the obstacles, but he, he keeps his presence uh, with you. Yeah. And so, so Jonah, Jonah's born. Yeah. Jonah, Jonah was born and Jonah was born. Um, I'll just touch quickly. He, he was born with a very rare medical condition called bladder extrophy. So in the first trimester, you know, the pelvic bones are supposed to fuse and his didn't. So there was a gap and the, the bladder essentially fell out. So it's now outside of the body. And when that happens, um, basically everything in the genital urinary tract falls out of place. So there's multiple deformities, you know, m multiple major issues that are going on there. Um, but they did a scan, found out he had an intestinal tract, there's a chance of survival. And he went in for um, a nine hour surgery at three days old and he had his bladder put back in. They had to break his hip bones, reset his pelvis, and then they put him in a coma for a month and the longest month of my life. I will tell you, waiting for him to wake up. Um, but when he did wake up, he came home and, you know, we're all, praising God at that point saying, thank you for getting us through this, yeah. getting us walking through the fire because we thought we were done. You know, we thought this was over. This is, you know, we knew he had more surgeries that had to happen, but we thought the worst of it was done. And we were, we were mistaken. <laughs> you we're know, it yet. just, we weren't there yet. You know, over the next six months, Jonah had two more emergency surgeries um, for life-threatening conditions that we didn't realize that he had at birth. And each time we're brought to our knees and we're saying, you know, I don't care if you have to hold onto my hand and drag me through the fire at this point because I can't stand, but dear God, make sure I get through it because yeah. I'm not going to get through it on my own. And, and he did, he, he lifted us up each time and he made sure we got through, um, each, each circumstance that we had to face with him. And I mean, he did end up needing a G2 put in because he was failure to thrive. He was losing weight. 
Um, and then he had a genital urinary tract reconstructive surgery after that. Um, he has another big surgery coming up this summer too, and, and many more surgeries to come. And I think it's important that, you know, we keep praying for him because he has a lot of hurdles he still has to face. And, you know, we just hope that he uses those essentially to draw closer to God, yeah. you know. Now you, you mentioned at the very beginning, uh, your mom, mm -hmm. um, and I know you and your mom are very close mm -hmm. and she's been a tremendous support, but, um, as part of the story, uh, there has been some health, major health issues for uh, your mom as well. Right. And so how is that interplayed into all of this? Right. Um, so yeah, my mom and I have been best friends, you know, we've hung out like every other day, talked twice a day on the phone. This is probably one of the closest mother daughter relationships you could have imagined. And then a year and a half ago, we found out she has terminal brain cancer. And um, it was something that, you know, I had to immediately go to God and say, you know, now what am I going to do with this? And I, I know I have to keep praying to you. Um, I understand that I'm, I'm going to keep asking you for strength, but she played a very important role, a very specific role in my life where I was asking for comfort and acceptance and guidance and, um, you know, friendship. And she was there for everything. And now who is going to fill this empty gap? that I'm left with now that she's getting more sick. In took a month, I was in complete denial, but when I finally accepted that he was going to be able to fill every one of those voids in my heart, um, I was now strong enough and complete and able to be the daughter that she needed me to be for her instead of her having to be everything for me. Wow. So I just, again, see this imagery of, of a journey and of of you just walking with God in the midst of all of this. Um, so you mentioned how you started to read the Bible more regularly. Uh, and then you sent me the text. I mean, I know we're jumping ahead again, but what prompted the text? Like that that seemed to be a a pivotal, meaningful moment in your life. Yeah, I, I've tried to find a way to say this so I don't sound crazy or silly, and I can't. So I'm just going to have to say yeah. it how it happened because I don't know how to do it. But I woke up one day about a month and a half ago. I had some feeling in me that was different. It was not of me. I had never experienced this feeling in my life. And I told you it felt supernatural because I didn't know how else to describe it. But um, it prompted me to grab the Bible, a pen, and a piece of paper. And I went and I sat down by myself in a corner and I, I started reading scripture for hours. Actually, it was basically three days. I couldn't, I could not take myself from the Bible. But up until this point, I hadn't had everything figured out. You know, I believed in Jesus. I believed he was our savior. He died for our sins. He was resurrected. But I was having a problem understanding the Trinity fully. I, I had an issue with, was he really God? And um, whatever this was welling up inside of me, right, uh, said you're going to figure it out and you're going to figure it out now. There's no more stalling this. Um, so I drew a diagram. Essentially, it was a diagram of the Trinity with corresponding scripture all around it. And I said, oh my goodness, I, that did not come from me, but I'm going to study this. And I studied it and it didn't take me long to realize who Jesus was. And that feeling... That feeling welled up inside me. It got stronger and stronger until eventually I was consistently crying. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not sad and I'm not scared or lonely. Um, I'm only feeling good emotions right now. And I can only imagine that this is the spirit coming over me. And I went to um, my stepdad's house. He's very much a man of faith. And I was just talking to him, right? I was just talking to him about, you know, about Jesus and this diagram that I had drawn and he didn't even let me finish you know he, he stopped me and he said Katrina this morning God told me that you were going to come to my house and he told me that you were going to tell me that you had been filled with the spirit and it was at that moment that you know I couldn't deny any longer that God had um that God had come over me and and you know I I was completely changed at that point that's amazing and I, I love the fact that you, you it is supernatural, right? It I think is. Mm -hmm. I think for people listening and think, well, what what difference? What does an encounter of God like? It's it, it steps beyond our circumstances and our situations. And and I remember just just again hearing your story. And you know, we don't have the time to share all the details, but it has been so so 
uh, amazing. So I love the final comment in your text where you said, now life really begins. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what do, what, what do you mean by that? So up until that point with what I would consider my encounter um, with God, I've been living a life with him. You know, I was reaching out to him. We were creating a relationship together. You know, I was getting to know him. And um, after that, my mindset changed. Do I don't want to just live with God. I want to live for God. Mm. And there's a difference. There's a very big difference between those two things. And um, my mindset changed. And, you know, my view on my purpose here on earth completely changed. And it's a whole new life. Wow. Well, Katrina, um, thank you. I mean, thank you for, for sharing your story. Uh, thank you for um, just allowing your story to have an impact uh, upon others. And so it has been, it has been a privilege for me to really walk with you and Chris and your two beautiful boys. Thank you for uh, being there for us. <laughs> I mean, we see them, we see them, we see them at church on Sunday and it's great. We were able to come back now and to see your boys and Caden, his love of bugs and Jonah, his just <laughs> smile that just fills the room. Um, but, but thank you for the way that you are living out your faith. I mean, it is uh, just absolutely amazing. And so I, I really hope for, for, for people watching um, that, that they see this as a reality that, and, and you, you, you've hit it on the head, right? That, that, that God wants to encounter life with us. Like it is a relationship and, and not just simply live with him, but to live for him. And so, um, so thank you. And um, I just want to say for others that are watching this, uh, maybe you're at a place where you have questions or you're kind of wondering, you know, we would love to connect with you as well. And as I've shared with Katrina, like this didn't happen overnight. This, this is a journey. And so we want to be a part of your journey um, as well. And so if you have questions or you want someone to pray with you, or you're just wondering what is going on, then, then reach out to me and we will connect and we will um, just see what a next step may be uh, for you. Uh, but uh, before, we, before we wrap up, um, let me pray. Let me pray for you and your family, your amazing family, and for those that are uh, watching. Let's, uh, let's pray together. And so gracious God, we are grateful for this day, for the way that you encounter us in life, oftentimes in difficult places. And I thank you for, uh, for, for Katrina and for her story and for her witness of who you are. I thank you for, for Chris and for Caden and for Jonah. And I just pray that your hand would continue to be upon them. I pray specifically for, uh, for Jonah um, with uh, the surgeries that are coming, that you continue to bring healing. Uh, God, you are a God of miracles. And we just continue to pray for a miracle to occur in, in this little boy's life. I pray also for those that are watching that Holy Spirit, you, you come over us in incredible ways. And, and maybe you're speaking into someone's life here today. Um, may they reach out. And may they see this as an opportunity, as God, you wanting to encounter them. And so we ask it all, Jesus, in, in your name. Amen.
cuando 